All right. Uh, so uh, this is the first meeting of an infrastructure special interest group for the Foreman community. Um, the idea was here was to take a lot of what we do already um, amongst a group of folks and try and elevate it to a bigger, more broad, transparent community group. Um, see if we have some folks that would like to join in and help in the care and feeding of our infrastructure. Um, identify exactly what the group uh, covers and manages uh, and what uh, areas we should tackle in the near term, uh, what areas we should improve on and possibly think about uh, for the long term. Uh, there are a few ongoing items currently that I'll cover, um, a few ideas uh, and discussion points that folks brought up prior to this meeting. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll plan uh, roughly to do this maybe every three to four weeks, um, otherwise drive discussion and um, updates uh, through the discourse, uh, the community forums, uh, you know, post, post our plans, post our updates there as we go along as folks tackle different pieces um, of this. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, just evolve, generally evolve as we figure this whole thing out. Um, I also want to broadcast this as a way for folks in the community to, who um, don't necessarily want to participate in infrastructure, but have infrastructure needs uh, to be able to come to us and present those ideas, those questions, those needs, uh, and we can decide as a community uh, <clears throat> if we want to address them or how we want to address them. Um, I have a sense that that will, if that if that happens, that'll largely start around things like Jenkins Jobs versus uh, GitHub and, and that sort of uh, more runtime environment requests rather than necessarily uh, full hardware requests. Um, yeah, so that's the goal. Um, and uh, before I guess I, or that's my thinking on it anyway, but you know, I'm looking, I'm, it's open to the group. I just, I'm just organizing it and uh, kicking things off. Um, does anybody have anything else introduction or goal related that they would like to add for the group? All right. Um, so this was, uh, I'm gonna go with areas of, uh, I call them care, I guess the care and feeding of these things uh, that we, I posted to discourse um, to ensure sort of like, we are clear on what we're dealing with or what we're taking care of um, and what things are either outside of the scope or inside of the scope that we may have uh, missed. Um, that list uh, currently is uh, what I'm called, I guess, a phrase is underlying infrastructure management. So that's the various community providers of infrastructure, um, folks like the, uh, you know, Oregon State Open Source Lab, um, uh, Rackspace, uh, since they we're still using some of their stuff, uh, what is it, Scaleways. Um, the, the underlying providers, and then the sort of set of stuff that runs on top of those things, um, you know, Jenkins, uh, the Jenkins jobs themselves, um, since we do, this group has historically managed building those jobs, the configuration of those jobs, and trying to also guide developers that want to update and build new or existing Jenkins jobs. Uh, the Redmine instance, uh, the website, and all the web servers, uh, DNS, since that's now under this group's control, um, the Foreman instance and its associated puppet server uh, that underlie the management of all of the other uh, servers and applications that we run, uh, and Koji. Uh, and if I miss anything there, please let me know or add it to the list. Um, all right, 
So uh, the other things I wanted to, uh, or what I wanted to jump into first, um, so I heard this mentioned from a few folks, and I think it's a good one, is um, documentation. Uh, I think we have a bit of scattered documentation when it comes to our infrastructure um, to give uh, a quick ish view of things, right? Uh, to my knowledge, the two places that we store infrastructure docs of a sort, or uh, at least code, if not docs, is there is the Foreman dash infra Git repository uh, that houses um, all scripts uh, related to either managing the boxes, managing the apps, uh, managing Jenkins, the Jenkins nodes, uh, Koji, uh, anything related to those are stored in this repo in some way, shape, or form. Um, whether it's some, uh, you know, some of the scripts that we run on Koji that manage some of the Koji things, uh, or the bulk of things, which is uh, under the Puppet directory. Uh, where you can find the various uh, modules uh, that underpin and manage those services, Redmine, Jenkins, um, Jenkins, Jenkins Job Builder, which is where the CI jobs actually live and get deployed, uh, Freight for Debian. Um, this repo contains everything that we have. It has a... Uh, read me associated with it that tries to lay out sort of the overall structure of what lives in what directory it has a currently a small blurb on jenkins job naming conventions uh, the rest of the infrastructure uh, information is all um i'd say buried uh, and since only those who know to go look here go look here um which is the redmine wiki um, you'll find a variety of different um, pages and you know wiki pages on here. Uh, there is an overall infrastructure one. I'm not honestly sure if it has everything these days associated to it. Probably not. So this is out of date very clearly. Um, there's you know links on here. I think currently to some of it that it's had you know. That people, the folks who have been taking care of it, have tried to keep, you know, on here over time. There's, you know, Koji docs. Uh, the takeaway here is there's there is docs here, good docs here. They're very kind of scattered um, and unknown from a time when we were very focused on using the Redmine wiki for all things sort of documentation that wasn't directly on the Foreman docs itself that wasn't directly related to like running uh, forming itself. Um, but in terms of discoverability and knowledge that they're here, it's not very clear and obvious. Um, and so I think, I, I feel like from, like I said, others gave this input to that one thing we should start to try to solve from the get go is let's clean up and centralize and have a good spot for the infrastructure docs. Uh, that way we know what we're dealing with and we have it well documented uh, as to what we're dealing with. Uh, and so um, that leaves the question, first question of uh, where should we put docs? You know, should we, should we stick with a wiki? Should we put them in form and infra under a docs directory and stick with uh, markdown? Should we put them in some other place, uh, you know, associated with the form and uh, website um, thoughts. My initial thoughts, I guess, would be putting it on the foreman.org, or we could even possibly put it on the discourse or something like that. I don't know if discourse has a pin or if that is what we would want to use discourse for, but uh, I think that's a possibility.
other ideas or leanings? Where do you want to go to find your docs or look or write them? I like to write them as Markdown in some Git repository. And you know that. <laughs> yes, but the rest of the class doesn't know that. that that's true. <laughs> Especially my thinking is here always, if our infrastructure is down, I cannot access this course or the web page. And That's a good the documentation might contain how I can bring up the infrastructure. So if it's rendered also to the website, great. But there needs to be a source that can be outside of our infrastructure. And I would call GitHub outside of our main infrastructure. I think the most important thing is that it's one place and not scattered across various different places and um, formats. Are you saying redundancy is a bad thing? <laughs> I hope you are. No, it can be stored redundantly in multiple places, just one is the source of truth. <laughs> The redundancy isn't bad, but you know, multiple places to edit is bad. Okay, so I get strong leanings for a docs directory in Foreman Infra. Does that make sense? I don't think a separate directory doesn't seem to make sense. If Foreman Infra is our infra, might as well put it all there, right? Um, if if we did do that, I would say I think Orc Form and Infra would need a real um, uh, uh, I guess just clean up it so that it's a little bit nicer for other people to access Form and Infra currently. I just feel like for example, even if I want to work on like CI stuff, I have to go through like a, a, a large number of directories. And while it is uh, linked, it, it doesn't, for example, go through with something like GitHub or something like that. So if, if that does happen, Foreman Infra, I feel like needs a, a facelift uh, alongside of it. Perhaps we could have a GitHub pages branch on the Foreman Info repo and have that uh, automatically deployed in some sort of manner so that we can also, for example, have links in that to where inside the form and info repo we'll find a puppet module for managing the Koji deployment to the CDN or whatever, just pulling up a whole list of stuff. Oh goodness. Mark down the power. Again, I think it. I just realized I was muted. So um, I was going to, I also already said. Uh, I prefer the Git repository, um, so I'm glad that Evgeny shares his opinion. Um, I do wonder how much documentation we have besides, uh, or that it doesn't fit on a single readme markdown file. Uh, well, if I single readme, I mean, I'm assuming that we would need almost like, if I look at this, there's a page almost for every piece of infrastructure. Koji, Jenkins. Some of them even were updated in this decade. And there's also another source of documentation like, that you forgot to mention, which is the tribal, tribal knowledge, which is stuck inside the heads of certain people. <laughs> it's not written down anywhere. 
Yeah, I think that might even be bigger than the rational documentation. Fair point. I mean, there's probably knowledge trapped in there that we don't even know is trapped in there. I know that's true for me. <clears throat> Um, anything else documentation related? I, I didn't feel like we needed to necessarily go into Aller Organize specifically here. I can. Um, I, I do want to comment on the get, get the pages branch in to publish docs. Um, I do think it's, I think that's a bad idea and we shouldn't do it because you can also let the publish for my doc directory in the master branch, and that way you have these all things combined in a single branch. And you can actually do reviews when you change some infra in public code, you can actually also do the documentation part as a single PR, and I think that's a big benefit. We could only publish GitHub pages from the master branch from the docs directory. It's just a setting away, so um, unless you're not opposed to publishing the docs, how we publish them is an implementation detail. Exactly. All right, I wrote that wrong. That's what I was thinking folks meant to was auto publishing. Sticking with the docs directory and auto publishing. I think you should remove the branch part of the sentence. Yeah, just, just auto publish to GitHub pages and not call it GA pages. Matches the name, the the branch name. Well, we can now, since we control the DNS, we can also add info the form .org if we really want to publish it. Nice place. <laughs> um. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um, I think if there's any other nuances of it that we need to word, discuss here that anybody wants to discuss or hammer out. I think the part that someone mentioned that we have a lot of tribal knowledge is the hard part of documenting, other than just writing things down. But even knowing what to write down is going to be hard. So I, I don't know how we should tackle that. Like I, I probably have a lot of the tribal knowledge in my head, but I don't know what kind of information you guys don't know and what's not documented. My hope is sort of that if we start with, at least with migrating what's in Redmine first, and then as we open PRs and we review them, that tribal knowledge will kind of seep out of our brains into our reviews. It'll make us think of things. It'll make us say, well, that's just wrong or that's old. It's now this way. And by that method, ho hopefully like pull that out and then, um, over over time, as we either do my do other work, or we run into a problem, if we keep the docs up to date, as you said, as we make changes to the info, if we keep the docs up to date. I'm, I'm hoping that more and more of that tr that knowledge will come out through those processes, because I don't think we have to get it you know right the first time, but this will set the stage for us to have to have centralized it and at least you know write it down once <clears throat> sorry uh uh and so for these things um I would, I would like to have, you know, owners or, you know, folks who want to work on them attached to them so that they're spending some time on it. They're picking up tasks through their, um, 
whatever other work streams they have or when they have free time, but they can also be the ones to report back on the, you know, status and updates uh, of a particular item. Um, some of the coming topics, I guess, in a way, we sort of have that in a way. I don't know if owners is the right word. Feel free to throw different participators. I don't, that's a big hard word to say. Um, <clears throat> I don't mind working on this, but I wonder if it would be good if I was a reviewer rather than the person doing it. Because that, that way someone else actually looks at the content. Yeah, that sounds good. I will take on yes, auto complete. I'm not used to you. Uh, I don't mind owning and starting, kicking off, creating the docs, migrating the docs off of Redmine, digging through Redmine. Um, yeah, it does look like there's some more verticals from Textile to Markdown, so those might be a good start for pages. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but if anybody else likes to also grab and migrate pages, that you know, feel free to speak up, and I'll we can we can share them. Uh, right now. Going to. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to move along to not typing. So I'm, I hope you're laughing at something else and not at me failing at Markdown. Um, uh, go with yes. <laughs> so. um, all right. Uh, next thing up is ongoing rack space migration um just quick reminder there's uh, two things there's an rfc out there uh, where we tried to share this um you know with the community originally um and it's had lots of good progress um it likely needs some updating at the moment uh, as i look through it um we are down to, we did a bulk of the migration and we were down to uh, web servers, three things, web server, foreman, and puppet Met server. What I, foreman, I same, uh, Jank is a uh, master instance. Do this, then it actually will. Chickens, web server, and server. Um, Guinea has been doing some work on this here and there for the web server. Uh, maybe if you don't mind, can you just give us a quick update of where you are, what you're doing with it? In my other terminal, fixing up my stuff. Um, so we have currently one machine for, at Rackspace. It's called Web02 for historic reasons. That's hosting the main website and all the repositories that we have, like all the young repositories and um, web in repositories. Until I think a week ago, it also hosted the Docs, the foreman org, the new instance Melanie and Lukash are working on. So it's not longer the case. Yay, less stuff to move around. Um, and it also holds um, rsync for incoming for our bugs service and for mirrors to pull down repositories. Um, this all uh, needs to go, as Eric already mentioned. So I have created a new machine in the environment we have at the Oregon State University, uh, which I cannot pronounce the abbreviation for. I'm sorry. The machine is up and running, and it currently received all young content identically to uh, the, the, the old machine. 
I'm currently working on Debian content, which um, is kind of broken because public didn't know how to properly set up the machine before. Um, yeah, and when that's done, and I also tested the website and our sync, we can go and switch over. Um, given my currently limited time, this is all only progressing slowly, but this is progressing. If I didn't get that right, feel free to holler at me. Uh, don't you dare writing me down as an owner for all of the migration. I didn't. You tried. I did. You were on it. Like. Uh, and then that will be, it still leaves us Jenkins and then the Foreman puppet server to migrate. I think Jenkins can be done by Tomer. He did so fine last time when we had to reset up Jenkins. <sighs> He's not denying it, so may I should just put him down here? <laughs> I didn't do anything except tell people, we'll hack, we'll hack. <laughs> oh, we had the forensics afterwards on the... Um, okay, so then that, like I said, that'll leave Jenkins and form a puppet server. Um, we can align those after the web server, unless anybody would like to step up and volunteer to uh, try those or work on those. Um, these tasks do require more, uh, do require some keys to the kingdom, or at least collaboration with someone that has keys to the kingdom. Um, but if anybody is interested in doing those, uh, just let us know. Um, otherwise, I think we'll just try and follow on after the web server. Um, and uh, if you're curious, uh, just to be clear, you know, the reason we're migrating off Rackspace is because they stopped doing their uh, open source program. And we uh, were able to get more resources at the Oregon State Open Source Lab. And so that's why we're migrating uh, our resources and machines over to their infrastructure. I do think we should combine the migrations with upgrades to CentOS 8. Currently, both Jenkins and Former are running on CentOS 7. And since those require a reinstall anyway, that's a good thing to combine. That may require a little more work since we would need to test and ensure those things uh, work well and deploy well on uh, EL8, uh, except for Foreman, because you know we all know that works because we're testing it. <laughs> for Jenkins, there's a vacant file in the Foreman infra repository, so that should be easy to test. Uh, don't know the next one here. I don't have a lot of info on uh, we don't because we haven't started, but it, I'm just putting it here because it's one that we have identified that needs doing. Uh, currently, Redmine runs on scale netway scale. One of those ways, which one? Scale, scale way. Um, and I've reminded the reason why we need to move it off of there. Same as Backspace, they stop sponsoring. I assume we would want to That's migrate. Also... But I was just checking that. I assume we would want to just move, migrate that to open uh, Oregon. State Lab as well. 
put it all together. Go ahead, Tom. I just wanted to add that on Scaleroid, we also have the two ARM builders that we really wanted to decommission. And then there was someone who suggested that we, uh, they want to sponsor a new ARM builders on Amazon. I don't know if there's been any work on that, but those are other servers that are currently on Scaleroid. Yeah, there hasn't been work on the ARM builders, I think. And one problem is that uh, Debian builders, they have access to push contents to the uh, to the server, to the web server, and we don't have good access controls for that. Um, currently, we sort of get away with that by maintaining all the Debian builders ourselves. But if it's sponsored by a community member, then um, they basically gain access to push any any content into our browsers. We were going to be commissioned them, then stop because somebody was going wanted to keep them and was going to sponsor new ones, and then we've gone quiet. Is that the recap? Yeah, I think there was a discourse thread or also ours. Yeah, I can look up the discourse. We either need to decide if we're migrating or go ahead with the decommission plan. By the way, we've already disabled the arm build since 2.1, I think. So yeah. we have been building them. We just kept them on if we want to build an older version. Okay. So they're really just there to support 2.0 at this point? Yeah. I put the uh, link to the discourse discussion in the chat. All right, uh, since Zach brought this up as an idea, I added it to the agenda. Um, he mentioned uh, cleanup within form and infra and specifically called out that it is painful uh, to get to the Jenkins jobs directory when you're trying to browse it in uh, GitHub, you're trying to look at it, link to it, know where it is. Um, there is an old discussion somewhere around the same topic from years ago. Uh, and that's where we landed at that time on the CI symlink. Uh, but if I were to go back in time to that discussion that I probably started, uh, I think I would find that we said that we would go that route. And then if it still didn't, if it so I had problems or we came back to the same discussion point, we would reconsider uh, a different route for um, making our CI, the, the jobs themselves, the job definitions more visible, easier to find and clear is where they are. Um, so let's start with that one. What are thoughts on uh, Jenkins job location. So I will add some extra context for historical reasons. Um, 
so currently the Jenkins jobs are deployed via Puppet. And the reason we've done that is, as Evgeny mentioned earlier, when all your infra breaks down, you want to respin it. And um, the alternative of deploying Jenkins jobs via Jenkins itself obviously can be done if your Jenkins server doesn't exist. Um, so it was quite convenient that we could just spin up the machine again uh, when we um, uh, when our Jenkins infrastructure was hacked or there was some compromise there. Um, so that's the historical reason why it's in Puppet and why it's so deeply nested. Um, that hopefully helps you make choices here. But uh, it doesn't say that we cannot deploy it also via maintenance to limit the delay. All Puppet does is uh, running a script. We can run the script from multiple places without too much hassle. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I, th I assume also the implication with uh, just for full context with deploying through the pub module uh, that the secrets are also driven through and contained within Foreman. Yes. So it sounds like a bit we are, there's two parts to this. <clears throat> there's uh, maybe a question, it sounds like, uh, do we want to deploy the jobs differently? And then does that imply we can organize them then differently? Or does the fact that we want to organize them differently <clears throat> push us towards um, wanting to deploy them differently? Um, Does anybody have strong strong feels on this? I, I I know that the sometimes the thirty minute delay can be kind of um, annoying for some of us when we're trying to fix a breakage in a job. Uh, you either have to just run it locally manually to update, um, or uh, just tell folks, you know, sorry, you got to wait thirty minutes before this can be fixed. Um, sometimes. That's not always a great answer uh, when you're trying to iterate or fix something because a pipeline is broken or some other, you know, when you're testing, uh, when I, I say testing things because we sometimes have to deploy something to know whether it's going to actually work properly. So I think if there's a low cost way of making it better, it's probably worth um, looking into and adopting. Uh, it doesn't mean we don't can't have a secondary system like deploying it by a puppet in case the world falls apart. But for a primary, I personally would like to see something a little faster, a little first world citizen for the jobs. Well, as it's getting mentioned, um, I think in the end, it's just uh, a set of files that puppet deploys and then runs changing job builder with the right parameters. Uh, like this is the configuration you need to apply and that's, that's it. Um, it's quite trivial to do that. Again, in, as part of a Jenkins job, you just need to set up the permissions. I think that's done. So let me shift it to then, maybe go with the original question then like, how would, how would folks like to organize, place, store the job definitions themselves? differently than we do today to make them more apparent and clear where they are. I just, they, they are. I, I even think that the directory or like where or in form and infra is definitely, I think the right place. Just if CI would be down to like first, second level, I think that would be fine. Just currently it is kind of in a labyrinth 
of yeah. directories and is is extremely hard to find. But otherwise, I think everything about it's fine. So uh, I think the proposal I'm hearing is move. Um, what is that? A big old path that I want to get right. So basically move the puppet path, the, the move the files from where they live today. This big old set of files to uh, is that uh, to CI? Is that do we like that name as a directory? Would we rather just call it Jenkins Jobs? Be more blatant about it, or? I think Jenkins Jobs is good because that's basically just what it covers. Uh, if we are okay, so proposals move all move those to the jink to that folder, and then. Um, what I couldn't fully get from Evgeny, uh, what you're saying is within the idea be we still deploy it from a puppet module, just doing like a git clone, and we have a script, or we move purely to a script that just runs Jenkins jobs inside Jenkins. So just thinking out loud, um, if you uh, so currently, public provides both the method to clone, get the files in place, and then run the job. Um, so one downside uh, of moving it outside of that is that you need to figure out a way to get the files onto the server itself. Um, you can probably script that and um, maintain some persistent checkout somewhere. Um, so there's some options to that. Uh, I'm not sure what the best one is. I think this is a typical example. So you, you need to play with it and see how well it works. Uh, play with whether or not how how Puppet would handle it, or whether it still makes sense to use Puppet versus just having a script that Jenkins deploys with well the script that Jenkins deploys the problem is that you can't rebuild it you you cannot use anything in Jenkins to rebuild the server because Jenkins isn't there if you provision it I think that's still something we should maintain um, so you you always need something that is outside of Jenkins could you just think yeah but could you have like a simple thing that creates a Jenkins job builder job in Jenkins that you then fire off from puppet like we, we store the original job builder def in Puppet as well. <laughs> that that would bootstrap it, and we'd still first per, first class it as in the Jenkins job that then sets itself up. Which that's actually a, that's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was a we, we would we would have a job in Jenkins that ran Jenkins job builder, and as a backup, we'd have a job definition for that one job in Puppet if we need it. An additional benefit of that is that we don't have the Jenkins job builder that needs to run every single Puppet run and keep the server active. So yeah, I, I yeah, I like the option. Cool. Did I get that right? A puppet module that deploys the job that populates the jobs? Sure. I'm sure there's better wording in there, but I don't English well someday. <laughs> uh, Just don't forget yeah. to set up the CI to automatically trigger the job that builds the jobs that updates the CI. So essentially, we get a, a bootstrap change job builder config. Cool. 
Um, are there other any other known uh, directory structures or cleanups any that inside Formative for itself uh, that people have had a mind to capture? Okay, well, uh, you know, think on it. If uh, next time around you think of something, um, do uh, throw it out there on the agenda or bring it up. Um, um, I go you can to the. Uh... Oh, I was going to say you can add me as an owner of that. I don't mind doing that. And so just going back to the red mine uh, section, uh, while we're migrating it, we might as well uh, upgrade it to the late version of web. What do we run on today? something. Yeah, and then you also want to upgrade Red, uh, the Redmond server itself to EO8, which also gives you a new Ruby version, which you probably need for the Redmond itself. The latest one is 4.1.1 right now. And I have no idea where you can see the version here actually, but it's ancient. If I recall, the biggest blocker that's been to upgrading Redmine has been certain plugins. Yeah, but that was the last time. Um, Greg dropped most plugins. Um, so currently, we have our um, a Git repository on our, Jink, our Git infra, which is a fork of Redmine, uh, which has some custom patches, but Greg cleaned them up, and they're quite small now. Um, okay, uh, we've only got <clears throat> a few minutes left. Um, are there any other um, comments about things we talked about or topics, quick topics that anybody would like to bring up? I was thinking about the ARM uh, part. I'm wondering, currently we have apps.deformer.org um, or tap.deformer.org. Um, should we actually spin up a separate repository with just ARM builds? So they're community builds rather than official builds that could deal with the security aspect of it. My personal preference would be not to spend our time on ARM. But I'm not sure if everybody agrees with me. There was community interest, um, and it would be good if we could um, support that. Yeah, uh, but community interest that gives me an ARM machine somewhere is only helping me so much and still producing a lot of work on my table. Yeah, I agree. Um, they should probably also be involved in actually maintaining the packages themselves. So 2.2 two will be GA best case in a few weeks. That's sort of the expected time. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, we can probably decommission the current ones and then 
so the start of the problem goes away automatically. Then the question is, do we actually want to sort of spend time to maintain it? And I think we should get back in touch with the person who uh, offered the machines and then ask them if they actually want to get involved. Um, back then, we didn't have the uh, infrastructure safe uh, with this effort. We do have more ways to deal with that. And I think then it would be easier to maintain. Another option I'm thinking of in case um, the trust issue for the machine is um, still an issue, we could perhaps have them sponsor a different machine on AWS and use some of the Reddit AWS um, budget instead to spin up an ARM builder if we want to go down that path. So there'll be let's say, indirectly sponsoring the ARM below while on the machine itself that has push access is um, controlled completely by um, the core team. I think that's um, maybe sort of the worst of both worlds. Um, because you, it does mean that the infra team and the package team, they have the full burden of maintaining ARM builds. And um, you also have the problems that it's probably quite complex with the, uh, with the budget. I think Red Hat pays the ABBS directly, and it's probably quite hard to sort of reimburse Red Hat for those. Uh, I think it's it sounds very complicated. Okay, I'm just trying to think creatively about um, how we can resolve that. Um, Security. Yeah, well, maybe there there are some options. Maybe you can have some separate account um, where you have a separate building address from the actual technical admins. But the, that might work. I don't know if you at all, so uh, I don't know if that's an option. Um, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> jump in and just think. Uh, I think this is, this is good thinking. Keep thinking about it. Uh, if you have ideas, it's, you know, we keep the post to the discussion board and then come back around to this, since it doesn't seem like it needs an immediate decision on the next meeting, uh, which would be approximately three weeks. At least I'll start with that cadence while we have a good bit going on. Um, I'll put out some <clears throat> targets for, um, what we want to try to accomplish by the next meeting. Uh, and so I'm going to aim for finishing the web server migration, the docs migration uh, and updates, and then uh, moving Jenkins jobs. Um, then um, we're almost out of time and I realize there's one other uh, sort of procedural topic that I wanted to ask about. And uh, that is, whether or not for when we are performing some, you know, change uh, or wanting to make the com community more broadly aware of a change that we're undertaking, such as the rack space migration. Uh, you, we used RFCs uh, previously for that. Uh, we also have this infra and CI category that is largely Current, yeah, largely right now is all about Jenkins posting to it. Um, and I think my question is kind of just to folks wanting to keep using development and RFCs if, where it makes sense as our place to post this kind of information, or do we want to use the uh, infra and CI category and maybe create a subcategory for jobs to post to instead of to the overall category? I always kind of feel that infra is a service to to foreman, to, to the community and to the developers. And 
given our infra changes are rather low volume, I've just put them into the development part of this course because that's where developers look at. We can make a support of development, um, similar to the, how we do releases or RFCs. So you can yeah. sort of filter them, but they're still part of the bigger. Makes sense. Perfect. All right. Uh, with that, it is one hour past. I want to thank everybody for coming, sharing, participating. Uh, like I said, I'll schedule another for approximately three weeks. Uh, and if anybody would like to pick up or work on any of these items or help with these items post-meeting, just uh, reach out and uh, either start doing it or po poke one of us uh, or poke just tell myself. Um, and thank you, and uh, see you next time. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. All right.